Now, I want to write the function that's going to do the opposite of number to name. I want a function that will take a name and convert it to a number because I'm going to ask my user to input either rock, paper, or scissors rather than type in a specific number. To do that, I'm going to write a function and I'm going to call it name to number. And it's going to take name as a parameter. This function will do this, the opposite of the number to name function. This function will take a string value and convert it to its number. Like we did in the other function, if the name is equal to rock, we're going to return a value of 1. Else if the name is the equivalent of paper, we're going to return a value of 2. And finally, if the name is equal to scissors, we're going to return a value of 3. Finally, I'm going to add my my catch-all, my else statement, that will return invalid name program error. Now hopefully this line of code will never execute, and if I write my program correctly, we'll never have to worry about that. But in the event that we have a problem with this function, that return value will let us know. Let's go ahead and test this function now and see if it's working correctly. So I'm going to run name to number, and I'm going to pass in a value of rock, and I should get a value of 1. I'm going to run name to number and pass in paper and get a value of 2. And name to number with a value of scissors is giving me an error. The reason is, this took me a second to figure out, I misspelled number. I did name number. So let's try that again. Name number with scissors, and that gives me a value of 3. There you go. Make sure you look at what you're typing. It can cause you all kinds of problems. And finally, name to number. Let's put in a value of sheep. Gives me my invalid name program error. So it does look like my name to number function is working correctly. Since that's all ready to go, I can start writing my main program now. So I'm going to write a new function called rock, paper, scissors. And this will be my main game program. This is where all the magic is going to happen in my rock, paper, scissors game. Now the first thing that I need to do is get the user's information about their selection. I'm going to ask the user to type in rock, paper, or scissors. So I'm going to store the user's string in a variable called user, and it's going to be equal to the input of do you want to choose rock, paper, or scissors? And I'm going to have it go to the next line. So now the user should type in rock, paper, or scissors. I then want to get the numerical equivalent of what they selected, so user number is going to be equal to name to number, passing in what the user just wrote as a parameter. So if you've got how this is working right here, the user is going to enter a string. User is going to be the string version of their selection. I'm then going to use the string number of their selection in my name to number formula or name to no number function and that will assign a number in user number. I want to do the same thing for the computer. So now I'm going to get the computer's information about its selection. I'm going to handle this a little bit differently. I'm going to generate a number first using a random number generator. So the computer number is going to be equal to random.randint1 through 3. The computer is going to get a random integer, 1, 2, or 3, and that will be rock, paper, or scissors. Just like I did for the user, I'm now going to have to take the computer's number and convert it to a string. To do that, I'm going to store a variable comp, which stands for computer, and that's going to be number to name, passing in the computer's number as a parameter. 
At this point right here, it would be a good idea to test your program to make sure that it's working correctly. I like to do this through the use of a print statement. I'm going to have a statement that prints the user, then the user's number, then the computer, and the computer, or the comp number. Those are the four bits of information that I have right now, and I want to make sure that they're correct. Now, I don't have any intention of this particular print statement making into the final program, but if I run rock, paper, scissors now, I should see if the user is getting a proper number and the computer is getting a proper name. So let's go ahead and run this and give it a little bit of a test. So I'm going to run rock, paper, scissor. Notice I forgot the S, so it's rock, paper, scissor on my screen, not scissors. And I've got a bit of a problem here. Do you want to choose rock, paper, scissors? Oh, and that's because, as some of you might have noticed this, I used integer and not input. It's a pretty big error. That's why we test our program, though, before we get further into it. It's nice to catch these things before you've written dozens of lines of code. Let's go ahead and try this again now that we have the proper statement in there. Rock, paper, scissor. Do I want to choose rock, paper, or scissor? I'm going to choose rock. And now I get a simple debug message here that says rock, one, scissor, three. And that's correct. Scissors does have a value of three and rock has a value of one. Let's go ahead and try that again. This time I'm going to choose paper. Paper should have a value of two. The computer randomly chose scissors again, got a value of three, and my paper did get a value of two. Let's try it one more time. This time, let's pick rock again. The computer chose paper, and so all of my debug tests right here work correctly. The strings are showing up correctly, and the numerical equivalents are showing up correctly. So we've properly tested our program, and we've caught a major error pretty early in our program, an integer statement instead of an input statement, and we're ready to move on. The next thing that we're going to have to do is do the mathematical calculation that we talked about earlier to determine the winner. So let's go ahead and compute a winner in this part of the function. And I'm going to write a, uh, a variable, and let's call it results. My results variable will say we're going to subtract the user number from the computer number. Once I have that result right there, as in my earlier example, we're going to take that mod 3 because there were three total choices. This should give me a results variable that tells me who the winner is. 1 for player 1, 2 for player 2, and 0 for a tie. I'm going to add the results variable to my debugging code down here and see if the results are indeed correct. With that added, let's run the program rock, paper, scissor, and I'm going to choose paper. I chose paper, the computer chose paper, and our result is zero, so that's correct. So let's rock, paper, scissor again. I'm going to choose rock. The computer chose paper. Paper covers rock. Rock had a value of one. Paper had a value of two. And the result is 2, correctly identifying the computer as the winner. Let's try this one more time. This time, I'm going to choose scissors. I chose scissors. The computer chose rock. The computer crushes my scissors, returning a value of 2. Again, our formula is correct. Now, you might want to keep running this until you get a player 1 victory just to test that part of the code doesn't look like it's going to cooperate with us, but I would run this program as many times as you need to make sure that every possible result has occurred. So now we've managed to compute a winner and report those to the results variable. All that's left to do is print the correct winner. So let's go ahead and create a string. We're going to do this with an if elif statement. We need to see who the winner is. So we've determined the winner, and we're going to assign a string to say either it's player one, either it's computer, or it's a tie. So this will set a string with the winner's name. And 
So if results equals zero, the number zero, then we know the winner is nobody. Else if the results equal one, we know the winner is player one. Else if the results are equal to two, we know the winner is the computer. So we now have a string to represent the winner. And I'm going to add my else statement as part of my debugging process and say that winner is equal to invalid winner. If I ever see this message, I know where to check. So I've managed to set a string equal to the winner. And now all that's left to do is print the results. So print the results. And I'm going to say, uh, we're going to make this a little bit fancy. So I'm going to say player one chooses percent %s, and they're going to choose the user variable. Print computer chooses percent %s, and they've chose the computer variable. Next, I need to print out who the winner is. So I'll print percent %s is the winner. And I stored that in a variable called winner. When we run this program now, we run rock, paper, scissor. I choose rock, and my message is printing OK. Player 1 chooses rock. Computer chooses scissors. Player 1 is the winner. And I don't need this debugging code anymore, so I'm going to take that out. And rather than erase it, I'm just going to leave it commented out. So if I ever need it again, I can quickly take that comment off again. And I'm going to run this program several times to see if it indeed works in every scenario. So last time I chose rock, let me cho choose scissors this time. Player one chose scissors, the computer chose rock, rock crushes scissors, and the computer is the winner, and my message is correct. And one more time, I'm going to choose paper. I chose paper, the computer chose a scissor, and the computer won again. My gosh, I'm terrible at this game. Let's try it one more time. Maybe we can get a win. Let's go with rock. Player 1 chose rock, computer chose paper, and the computer is the winner again. So I managed to write a program that beats me every single time that I run it. With this shell right here, you should be able to add some interesting elements to your rock, paper, scissors program. There is going to be no challenge program for this lesson. Hopefully you've been able to follow along through the development of this rudimentary rock, paper, scissors game, and you have a working game now that you can kind of play with and add your own flair and touches to. Maybe you want to add some ASCII art to it to represent the rock, the paper, and the scissors from the, what we talked about last lesson. So there's some stuff you can do to make this program more personal to you. It's also going to become pretty important because one of the next challenge programs we do is going to be adding some more elements to rock, paper, scissors. We're going to have five choices instead of three and if you aren't able to do the mathematical calculation to determine a winner, all of a sudden it becomes very difficult to do a series of if, elif, and else statements to determine the winner because there's going to be five choices instead of three. As always, if you have any questions about this video and the development of rock, paper, scissors, or any of the other videos you've seen, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll help you out any way that I can. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.